Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to turn to Nomi Prince, author of soon to be released Collusion How Central Bankers Rigged the World. Nomi, welcome. Thanks. How are you doing? Always great to see you. In this hotel, the Sunset Marquee, you developed a pitch over a 24 hour binge. Is that correct? That's right. I, I had the idea, spoke it out in my mind, and, and sat in a room here for 24 hours, and then got it off to my publisher. And here we are a couple of years later with the book about to be out. Is Billy Bob Thornton in the book? Billy Bob Thornton. It might be. might be. We have to wait and buy the book. Okay. Yeah, buy the book. Each yeah. section of your book starts in a different area of the world, but always in the same year, 2008, which is ground zero for collusion. So what evidence do you have for the collusion, or what do you mean by collusion? We're talking about collusion between central banks. Tell us more. Yeah, so basically the Fed is the central collusion meister. And in the beginning of uh, the financial crisis, they decided to save our banks, the U.S. banks, because they basically caused the crisis. And they did it by manufacturing money and all these other things over the past decade. But they also did it by reaching out to all their central bank of friends throughout the world, particularly the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, all the sort of Euro banks. And they said, look, we need your help. But this was all done in the background of what was happening publicly. Publicly, they acted as if they saved the system in a period of like Who are they colluding against? They're colluding against the, 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 the general public, but they colluded with each other to rig rates, to keep money at, at the average zero levels that we have today to buy trillions of dollars worth of bonds from governments and from banks, particularly banks, that allows them to value all of their bonds up. So they basically artificially rig the entire bond market, stock market, because all of these institutions now have access to cheap money with which they buy their own shares and, and effectively just totally change the financial system. But what I did was I went country by country um, that I call pivot countries in the book. So I did Mexico, I did Brazil, I did China, I did Japan, I went throughout Europe. Um, and those are the pivot areas where I looked at how how they colluded over time. So I was going back to 2008 Ground Zero and seeing how they dealt with their own country's issues relative to the United States and also what the Fed wanted them to do and what they wanted to do for themselves. So there's all this little tension and there's also a lot of collaboration from the standpoint of the major central banks. So this is an interesting historical development. Central banks, walk us through because you've written a number of books in uh, covering banking and the history of banking. and. Historically, central banks were set up, we know, to be the lender of last resort, to be a backstop to the banking system, to prevent things like bank runs from getting out of control, et cetera. So when you have different central banks in different countries, and they're operating up until what you're suggesting here, they were operating independent of each other. And their role in these economies was to, as we were saying, be a backstop to the banking system. So um, what... When, when they collude, as, as you're talking about, that it, it, we enter kind of a post-market a post, um, economy. In other words, they, central banks started to participate in markets, you know, from the 1987 crash, Alan Greenspan and, and the, the, the plunge protection team, which included Ronald Reagan uh, and Robert Rubin. Uh, they started, the central bank began to become a player now we hear uh, Central Bank of, 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 of Switzerland is buying, aggressively buying stocks. So these central banks, how do they fit in the global banking system? What are they doing now? Instead of the lender of last resort, they're the buyer of first order. Like, what, what exactly are they doing? What are they doing? Well, that's right. I mean, they, they become massive hedge funds for one thing, but 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 instead of borrowing money or, or going to investors and sort of using their money to, 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 to find things, they, they are creating money. So they're, they're fabricating electronic money. They're going through the financial system to basically get it out there. And they've collectively got about $21.7 trillion worth of assets on their books through quantitative easing, which have been used to purchase corporates, if you're the European Central Bank, equities and ETFs, if you're the Bank of Japan, mortgage assets and government bonds, if you're the Fed. And they have become the market. They've not just become a buyer in the market and a lender of cheap order to all of the major banks. They have become effectively the rigor of the market. So everything that's going on now is, is, is a fabrication at the hands of the collusion that the Fed began and used its counterparties of central banks throughout the world to manifest. It's kind of like financial warfare. It's like we had a G7 situation come after World War II, and there was a collaboration between like the major G7 countries in terms of geopolitics. And what we have now is in terms of the monetary system, in terms of currencies, in terms of asset um, evaluations and skyrocketing assets, we have that collusion amongst the same central banks. And we have the ones on the outside looking in, um, you know, Mexico, Brazil, China, and so forth, trying to find their spot in this new monetary system and this new artificial marketplace um, to be independent. 
So that's where the shift is changing. That's why China, for example, has risen so much as a superpower. Their central bank was very vocal, and I have a lot of this in the book, about going against the Fed and saying, look, what the Fed's doing is insanity. They're creating bubbles. They're fabricating money. This will not end will. And what they've done is decided to find a different way around that, which is create trading partnerships and all over the world start to actually finance development, which the United States doesn't do, with the money that they're creating and in order to basically peel people away, peel countries away from the U.S., from the dollar, and from this Federal Reserve policy. What do they say they, they're doing? In other words, how do they justify this? You, you, you say collusion that has a negative connotation. But, of course, they don't consider themselves to be colluding in anything. Uh, they think of themselves as coordinating policy. For, but w what do they think they're doing uh, exactly? They think, well, what they think they're doing and what they actually say they're doing are two different things. What they say they're doing is stimulating economies. So the Federal Reserve supposedly, by injecting $4.5 trillion into the financial system, buying bonds and evaluating on, on the back of that those securities upwards, they said that would create real growth. We know it hasn't created real growth. It hasn't really grown the economy. It's grown the markets. It's grown the asset economy, but not the foundational economy. They believe they have. And so what's happening now is all these central banks are talking, not really doing tapering. So the Fed is saying, all right, we're going to raise rates a little bit. We're going to shrink our book a little bit. But in actuality, if you look at it on a global basis, which is where the collusion comes into play, the European Central Bank, as, as a seesaw effect on the other side, is saying, all right, well, we'll still keep rates at negative. We're going to increase our corporate bond asset portfolio just because we can. These are institutions that have absolutely no accountability, no responsibility, no rules, and no regulations for themselves. They can do whatever they want because all they're effectively doing is creating ledgers with, amongst themselves and amongst the financial institutions to which they provide this cash in return for assets and keep rates low to keep that game going. That's, that's their game. Okay. So Ron Paul and the uh, people who follow Ron Paul, they had a huge movement out there at one point, audit the Fed. And this was now probably going back 10 years. Is part of the instigation for these central banks to collude a response to audit the Fed? In other words, in the United States with the Federal Reserve Bank, they started to talk about possibly tapering or tapering a little bit, you know, in response to, hey, you know, this audit the Fed movement is getting out of control. We need to throw them a bone. So what you're suggesting is on the back end, they made a call to European Central Bank or Bank of Japan and said, you know, we've got to appease these, uh, these Ron Paul guys. Uh, so we're going to say we're tapering. But can you please step up your purchases on a global basis and we can keep the party going with these zero percent interest rates to help out the oligarchy? That's exactly right. I mean, the European Central Bank is a key in this, right? Because what they said for two years now is they were going to stop their buying program. And then each time they got to the end of their buying program deadline, they extended it. So at the end of last year, they said, all right, we're going we're to really taper this time. We're going to decrease the amount of assets we buy per month. But then they extended the amount of months they will buy assets by a year. So when you do the math on all of this, there is no tapering. This is ongoing collusion to keep cheap money and asset evaluations up within the entire system, again, with no accountability. Partly, though, they have this thing where they want to be perceived as effective. So they are scared that all of this has not been effective or that the, you know, sort of emperor will take its clothes off or have no clothes or whatever in sort of the wake of this. And so they want to perpetuate this idea that economies have grown on the back of this. And governments are happy to do this. This is sort of the external collusion um, element of it. The United States government is perfectly fine, whether it was Obama or whether it's Trump, to say, look, yeah, the economy is growing. It's growing under my watch. But it's not really. What's growing are the amount of assets that can be purchased at this cheap money and therefore the evaluation of these assets, therefore mega amounts of debt, corporate debt, public debt throughout the entire world, you know, massively uh, high share values because corporations are, are issuing debt to buy stock and so forth. Um, that's not effective management. And they also have no exit plans. This thing I talk about sort of the end of the book. They don't, they don't have a way to really taper, to really get out of this because they never did what they said they were going to do to begin with, which is stimulate growth. All they've done is stimulate the financial system for the people at the top of it. Well, they've created a magic money tree by buying back assets that they own with the money that they print. Right. And it is a Ponzi scheme. That is like the definition of a Ponzi scheme. They're just get, they're making the money themselves. They're not even getting other people in on the money. They are actually creating the money and then doing that, as you say. So total separation of their role as being instrumental in having a responsible role in the economy. They've gone rogue, and they're just buying assets and printing their own money to buy those assets. That's right. They, their day job 
is to be regulators to the banking systems in their respective countries. That is what they are supposed to do. And there's some language in some of the central banks that say, okay, you have to make sure there's a decent amount of employment, there's full employment, some number in the system, there's a certain level of inflation and so forth. They have abdicated that entire sort of role, except for just talking about it as if they're doing it, because all they are really doing is, yes, fabricating money, purchasing assets, and keeping that going amongst let me, let me, let me ask you a theoretical question here, yeah. that the amount of stocks actually traded in New York has been reduced because through mergers and acquisitions funded by all this 0% money, is there a possibility that effectively central banks and the collusion that you talk about take public markets private, take the majority of interesting stocks that are out there that could be bought by the public to participate in growth and have a decent retirement account disappears and we enter a post market economy because all of the stocks and bonds have been purchased by these colluding central banks with their cheap money they're taking the public's private but not just a company deciding oh let's take ourselves private but they've colluded to say let's take the global stock markets private well effectively because by providing that cheap money most easily to the the small amount of financial institutions that sort of control the gateway to the markets they have effectively controlled the markets I mean that that's the whole idea of why I say they rigged the world they've really rigged all the financial so, so the question so if you say oh the markets trading at 25 times earnings 30 times earnings or X per cash flow those metrics are meaningless Yep. It, 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 they're meaningless. It's like saying, you know, the, 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 the people can't possibly work for these slave wages talking to the king and saying, no, I'm the king and you can work for slave wages or I'll, you know, put you in the gulag. In other right. words, there's no, there's no democracy. There's no dynamism. Right. There's just a massive takeover. There has been a massive takeover because all of the levels that we see today are not levels that are sustained by actual growth at a company level, at a wage level, at, you know, an individual financial security level. They are simply... Um, created by the collusion of central banks. All right, so your book is called Collusion. It's out in May, May 1st, yes. Work Day, Workers' Revolution Day. Nomi, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thank you. All righty. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Hubbard. I'd like to thank our guest, Nomi Prince. The new book is Collusion. There's a link to pre-order below. Check it out. If you want to catch us on Twitter, it's Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all.